Hey guys, this is Kevin here from Hannah Instruments, and today we're going to talk about alkalinity in your reef tank. So alkalinity is a pretty complex chemical parameter, but it's also one of the most important things you have to measure in your reef aquarium. Essentially, alkalinity is a measure of all the bicarbonate and carbonate ions that consist in your water, and it plays an important role in uh, many of the vital functions and uh, skeletal genesis that happens in a reef tank. So we measure alkalinity because it not only provides a really important ion for skeletal growth of corals and other invertebrates, but it also provides um, a buffering capacity for your pH. So essentially, if your alkalinity is a really low number, right, if you don't have it at the level you want it to be at, your pH is going to be uh, subsequently lower because of it. So the lower alkalinity you have, the, the lower your pH is going to generally be. So we like to keep an alkalinity at a range of generally 8 to 12 dKH or degrees carbonate hardness in order to maintain the proper amount you would find uh, in nature or in an artificial reef tank or something like that. So um, alkalinity thus is uh, one of the more important parameters we measure. And it's, it's also important because if you look at the, the three main ions that we use to be dosed to an aquarium, whether it be uh, calcium, magnesium, or alkalinity. Alkalinity is uh, one of the more limiting elements. So uh, on average, calcium, we see about 400 ppm, magnesium about 1,300 ppm, but alkalinity is only about 200 ppm mostly. So corals use it uh, pretty readily to build their skeletons, but they don't have nearly as much of it in the reef tank as, uh, as other elements like calcium and magnesium. So it's really important that you measure alkalinity often to not only provide the right amount for corals to grow and develop in your tank, but also to provide an adequate level to keep your pH above 8.0 because if your pH drops, it actually becomes harder for corals to, to grow their skeletons and it's a really important to keep your pH above 8. So when we measure alkalinity, we use our HI772 DKH alkalinity checker. This is a handheld colorometer that uses light to measure absorbance rather than you matching colors to a chart. So nice thing about these is no drops to count, there's no colors to match. It's really fast, easy, and accurate and precise way to measure alkalinity in your reef tank. Um, so if you were gonna get a DKH checker, you, can, you get everything you need to start testing right inside this box. So what that is, is it comes with our actual meter itself. This is the HI772 DKH alkalinity meter. It's a handheld colorometer, so that's a type of photometric device that uses light to measure absorbance rather than you trying to match a color to a chart. So the nice thing about these compared to other alkalinity test kits is there's no drops to count, there's no colors to match. It's really precise, accurate, and an easy way to measure alkalinity. You get your bottle of liquid reagents. Uh, so our alkalinity test uses a fixed sample size. So you're always going to use one mil of liquid reagent. And with that, you're also going to use this one mil syringe with provided tip. And it's important that we use these tips when uh, administering the alkalinity reagent because one, the reagent is a really dark green color. So if you try to measure out one mil, it becomes a little bit more difficult to see the numbers on the syringe. But also over time, the reagent can stain things. So you don't want to stain the numbers on there. So by using this one mil tip, all of the reagent will be inside the tip. You don't have to worry about making sure you've got uh, any sort of air bubbles or spaces in there. You're just going to bring uh, the last black stopper up to the, to the one mil marker at the end of the, at the last hash mark on the syringe. You also get two glass cuvettes. These cuvettes are what you use to administer the saltwater sample inside uh, into, into these vials right here by unscrewing the cap. And you only need one of them to perform the test, uh, but we give you two because since these are optical based tests, you don't want to keep them scratched. You want to make sure that these stay clean and clear, free of saltwater smudges or fingerprints or things like that. Because any obstruction of the light can cause uh, inaccurate reading. So we want to make sure that these stay clean and unscratched. So you have an extra one, you can always purchase more of them, but we give you two to start off just in case you, you break one or scratch one or something like that. So if we were going to run a test with our alkalinity checker, first thing you would have to do is install the battery on the meter, just a little Phillips head screwdriver on the bottom and a AAA battery that's provided. So I have my saltwater sample here. First thing I would do is I would take my glass cuvette and one little trick that I like doing is I um, take our Take some microfiber wipes. We do sell these separately, or you can just take any microfiber wipe you have. And uh, while I'm handling these cuvettes, I like to actually hold onto the cuvette, unscrew the cap this way. This prevents any fingerprints or smudges that your oils on your fingers that might already be there from uh, getting on the glass cuvette where the light's gonna pass through. So I like to give this little wipe down and I'm going to fill up this cuvette with 10 mils of tank water. Now uh, with these, it's always good to uh, get a 10 mil syringe if you have one handy and just use it to actually measure it out. Or you can get a little eyedropper 
and just fill up 10 mils to the line right there. So I'm going to administer this to the cuvette. And when you, if you're filling it up to the line, you're not measuring it. The one thing you want to do is read what's called a meniscus. And a meniscus is uh, a natural curve caused by surface tension uh, in glassware. So um, when you're reading the meniscus, it's going to form a really small U shape and you want to read the bottom of the U at the top of the line. So that's going to be a good indication that you administered enough salt water. And when you do so, you want to read it right at eye level. Make sure that everything was added correctly. Alrighty. So the first thing I'm going to do after I fill this up with 10 mils of tank water is I'm going to just give it a gentle wipe down. I'm going to turn on my alkylating checker by hitting the center button. These guys utilize a one button operation, so they're pretty simplistic. You don't have to worry about multiple buttons. And the nice thing about checkers too is they never need to be calibrated. So once you get your checker, you're never having to worry about calibrating them. They do have validation kits and validation kits, or we call them calibration kits, but in actuality, they are known standards to use to determine if your checker is functioning at its designated accuracy statement. So all of our checkers have designated accuracy statements to uh, where the number on the screen is going to be a plus or minus value within a range. That's, that's your guaranteed accuracy. So at this C1 phase, I'm just going to insert this checker inside the cuvette. And again, one thing that we also like doing too is uh, since these are optical based measurements, you insert a blank value in the start. And um, a blank value is just used to determine uh, kind of your with without absorbance. So before the color change happens and after the color change happens, it's used as a reference point. And when you're inserting these cuvettes inside of your checker, I like to face this little 10 millimeter marker forward. You don't have to do it, but it, it kind of ensures a better sense of accuracy because as Rounded glass isn't always perfect. Uh, there are some imperfections when at different angles. So by inserting this in the same position at C1 and C2 phase, it actually ensures that you are uh, indexing the cuvette in the proper position to kind of mitigate any sort of uh, potential problems or interferences from uh, the rounded glass. So we're just going to insert inside there, hit this one button. The checker is going to flash a couple times. It goes to a C2 phase. At that time, we're just going to take our one mil of liquid reagent. So you're just going to simply unscrew the cap. So when administering the alkalinity reagent to your cuvette, you want to make sure that the one mil syringe is attached so all the reagent goes inside of this tip and not inside of the syringe portion. So when you're drawing up the liquid reagent, you want to bring the rubber stopper, the last rubber stopper to the last hash mark on the, on the syringe here. So it's going to look just like that where you have the last rubber stopper at the last hash mark with all of that reagent inside the tip right there. And also, uh, over time, you may notice that these syringes become dirty. Uh, every time you purchase a new reagent bottle, you're going to get a new syringe from us. And we recommend that you actually switch out your old syringes with the new one to prevent any sort of uh, old reagent crusting or dried reagent crusting in the tip from being used in a fresh batch of reagent. And also, that being said, if you leave your uh, reagent chips dirty over time and you don't have a new bottle of reagent yet, uh, you definitely want to be able to clean these guys out with just distilled water and let them air dry because you don't want to get any sort of uh, dried reagent, crusted reagent in there that hasn't been a, that's oxidized or things like that. So we're just going to administer one milliliter of this liquid reagent to the salt water sample here. And again, this test, there is no drops to count. There's no colors to match. So you're always going to do the same amount of uh, liquid reagent for, it's always going to be 10 mils of tank water and one mil of uh, liquid alkaline reagent. And we're going to invert this three to five times like this. You just want to do it gently, and since these are optical based measurements, again, you want to make sure that uh, the outside stays clear, but also that there's no air bubbles on the inside. So air bubbles can cause the light to refract and bounce off different angles, so we like to make sure that these air bubbles stay free and kind of uh, mitigate those as best as you can. So once we get that inside the checker, we're just going to insert it again with a 10 mil forward, close up the hood, hit our button. It's going to cycle through uh, actually reading the, the, the color change right now inside of the since we added this liquid reagent. And you're going to see we get an alkaline result of 8.8 .8 dKH. So just in the range that we would want it to be. Um, and this is just one of the many product lines that we carry. Uh, our alkaline checker tends to be one of the more popular units we sell. It's a really fast, accurate, and precise way to measure one of the most important parameters in your reef tank. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.